6. Pay your brokers well. The power of good advice. Sometimes I see people posting a sign in front of their house that says, for sale by owner. Or I see people on TV claiming to be, discount brokers. My rich dad taught me to take the opposite approach. He believed in paying professionals well, and I have adopted that policy also. Today, I have expensive attorneys, accountants, real estate brokers, and stockbrokers. Why? Because if, and I do mean if, the people are professionals, their services should make you money. And the more money they make, the more money I make. We live in the information age. Information is priceless. A good broker should provide you with information, as well as take the time to educate you. I have several brokers who do that for me. Some taught me when I had little or no money, and I am still with them today. What I pay a broker is tiny in comparison with what kind of money I can make because of the information they provide. I love it when my real estate broker or stockbroker makes a lot of money because that usually means I made a lot of money. A good broker saves me time, in addition to making me money, like when I bought the vacant land for $9,000 and sold it immediately for over $25,000. So I could buy my Porsche quicker. A broker is my eyes and ears in the market. They're there every day. So I do not have to be. I'd rather play golf. People who sell their house on their own must not value their time much. Why would I want to save a few bucks when I could use that time to make more money or spend it with those I love? What I find funny is that so many poor and middle class people insist on tipping restaurant help 15 to 20 percent, even for bad service, but complain about paying a broker 3 to 7 percent. They enjoy tipping people in the expense column and stiffing people in the asset column. That is not financially intelligent. Keep in mind that not all brokers are created equal. Unfortunately, most brokers are only salespeople. They sell, but they themselves own little or no real estate. There is a tremendous difference between a broker who sells houses and a broker who sells investments. The same is true for stock, bond, mutual fund, and insurance, brokers who call themselves financial planners. When I interview any paid professional, I first find out how much property or stocks they personally own and what percentage they pay in taxes. And that applies to my tax attorney as well as my accountant. I have an accountant who minds his own business. His profession is accounting, but his business is real estate. I used to have an accountant who was a small business accountant, but he had no real estate. I switched because we did not love the same business. Find a broker who has your best interests at heart. Many brokers will spend the time educating you, and they could be the best asset you find. Just be fair, and most of them will be fair to you. If all you can think about is cutting their commissions, then why should they want to help you? It's just simple logic. As I said earlier, one of the management skills is the management of people. Many people only manage people they feel smarter than. And they have power over. Many middle managers remain middle managers, failing to get promoted, because they know how to work with people below them, but not with people above them. The real skill is to manage and reward the people who are smarter than you in some technical area. That is why companies have a board of directors. You should have one too. That is financial intelligence. 7. Be an Indian giver. The power of getting something for nothing When the first European settlers came to America, they were taken aback by a cultural practice some American Indians had. For example, if a settler was cold, the Indian would give the person a blanket. Mistaking it for a gift, the settler was often offended when the Indian asked for it back. The Indians also got upset when they realized the settlers did not want to give it back. That is where the term, Indian giver, came from, a simple cultural misunderstanding. 